We're just gonna talk about the information. It's gonna make this an amazing video with all this amazing lighting, but it's acting weird. So we're just gonna shoot it as is and bring it easy as always. So this is this is supposed to be an explanation video on the American economic system, money and the internet, and how it all works in the 21st second century. I don't know what fucking century. I don't know what century we are in. I need to stop cussing. Uh, basically, it's supposed to explain how the social economic problem works and explain something that's probably very obvious, but that's not necessarily obvious to everybody. It was obvious to me 10 years ago. And just to kind of get information out there to anyone starting out, struggling, or just getting back on feet. Okay, let's get into it. So up top, you have the world liquidity, which is all the money, M1, M2, M3 money that there is in the world. How much money is there in the world? That number, which is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 zeros. So 1.3 times 10 to the 15 zeros is how much money you have. I don't even know if that's what number it is. Yeah, there's that much fucking money in the world. It's not even a choice. There's a million. It's here. This is a billion. This is a trillion. <laughs> I don't, I'll look it up. This is, I'll put it in the video. This is what that number is. Um, there are 7.6 billion people on the planet Earth. So if you did the math and you equally divided this by that, you have this number for everybody. Okay. Now, beyond world liquidity, and we're just also going to use liquidity for the people and the internet because it's within this diagram. I grew up Christian, so they always put people as waters, whatever. Um, it's kind of the same thing here because the ocean of liquidity, the barrier to that is the internet. It's not even the barrier, it's the interface of the internet where you have seven points people because I get to access to you, but you can also have access to everybody else. And based on emotions, you're going to click what you see based on your desires, which are being driven by Maslow's hierarchy of needs, because you or your customers or your consumers are suffering and they're in pain for some reason that they're not able to achieve something on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So you're going to go to Amazon, Alibaba, Facebook, TikTok, one of those platforms where your customers or everyone else to get value, to feel better, to stop suffering. Uh, but overall, because the internet is a giant copy machine, it means it's also a giant money printer. So how does it start out if you're just starting out? How does it work if you're just starting out? So if you're just starting out, um, you start here on the board. It's education over time, basically you go to school, read over time. Eventually, um, traditional nine to five route says you then build up a great resume and you post it on the internet. Notice how that arrow goes into the internet. So education offline, build a resume, you post it on the internet. This is a path that you might see very often. Is you're doing something out here and you go back to the internet. You can see that happens multiple times. And even down there, this actually should be, there should be an arrow right there going back to the internet. Um, but anyway, you get your education over time. You develop a great resume because you went to Stanford, Harvard, or one of those whatevers. Um, or you start your own business, uh, HVAC system, which advertises online, to get your customers access to them, or an employer. If you're doing nine to five, that's fine. You get, you get a job through your employer, they send you a salary, give you a check. This situation, you're gonna have taking you have your hundred percent salary and you're gonna break it up. You're gonna take ninety five percent of your income, you're gonna put into your long and your short term investments. Long-term investments, 401k, Roth IRA. Between five and 12%. And then between five and 12% on your Roth and your, yeah. 401k gets five to 12%, Roth IRA gets five to 12, 12%. Um, but your short-term gets like 90. And that goes into your ally, your Capital One, Marcus Goldman, Amex personal savings. So you start building an, an, uh, a little nest egg for yourself. So, well, what do you do with the other 5%? Well, you can use that to eat, but also to live off 
well, to eat. Um, the rest of the money can go into, um, so the other 5% actually goes to um, your business and you're going to end up living on um, your personal credit cards. You guys want credit cards? People live on credit cards all the time. I lived around with credit cards last year and a half. You think act like credit cards are evil? They're not. You're saying you don't have to manage them. Take advantage of them. Zero percent APR credit cards. Um, ideally, your goal is to get a forty thousand dollar credit limit. Um, it's your buffer. Ideally, it's enough. Your your credit limit should be enough to cover you for years worth of expenses. So if you spend two thousand dollars a month, then you need twenty four thousand dollars worth of personal credit. Ideally, on zero percent interest rate. Because that means you get to use that money over the term of the rate and you can survive. You can eat. You can get food and not worrying about starving to death. Because we live in America and there is this much money in the world. You're going to be okay if you borrow some money to buy lunch. Okay. Uh, this covers food and regular bills. Like your gym membership. Um, this was some personal stuff for me. But after this... On top of it, beyond this, you also want to make sure you're you're, you're going to look at this kind of like a like a chessboard, and in chess you have your king and your queen. Your FICO score is your queen. Take care of your queen. Take care of your credit score. Don't let people mess with it. Keep us keep it locked down. Keep it secure. Your king is yourself. Because you're the one making the plays. All right. So you got you were. You learned something, learn something in school, you made a resume, you posted on the internet, you got a job, good for you, living off of nothing, you're saving 95% of your income, uh, 5 to 12% of your Roth or your 401k, dollar cost averaging into the market, and then you're putting like 90% of your savings in the short term ally, capital, Marcus Goldman's to um, make some plays and watching the market, buying the dip, doing all that fun stuff. You're still working, and your regular food is being paid off your personal CCs. And then you're like, well, Hendy, where do I live? Well, it's a great question. You live in your business. You look at all the all the rich people. <laughs> well, I can probably name some uh what, Bezos, uh Who's that, that virgin guy? Imagine that. Richard Branson, yeah, lived on a boat in England. Didn't even actually live in an actual house. Most of these people, what was it, Bill Gates and them started in a garage. And then they moved and then lived in their offices. Basically, you're going to be working, but you're also going to be starting your own business and saving. You're not actually going to live in a house. My solution when I was out here, you know, my solution was just living in a car. This is my 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 van. I've, I've already posted my video to my van life situation. Um, but yeah, that means you save at least was average rent at least two years ago, like twelve hundred dollars. I think it's gone up to twenty one hundred dollars a month. Um, average rent in America. Um, but yeah, so but you're gonna open a business account LLC. Get yourself structured. Talk to a licensed professional. Go to I went to LegalZoom. <laughs> They're great. Um, and you're going to get yourself incorporated and you're going to use open business line of credit um, and you're going to take some of the money here and you're going to transfer it as your seed money into your business. This is great because you also get to use it as a tax write-off at the end of the year when you do your W-2 because your goal is to go from employee to business owner and then to investor. So, go to Robert Kiyosaki. So, you're working, you're saving, and then once you get this set up, you're going to continue putting money into your personal savings here, but you're also going to use this money from your employer to fund your business. This is because you're going to be your own investor for the first startup. Your goal is to get three accounts going. So you have your personal credit card. This is unique here. Notice there's a thick separation between your business and your personal. You have your personal credit cards here for your food um, and your outings, clothes, all this other stuff. When you set up your business account, you're going to have three business accounts. You have a primary checking which is generally what you're going to use to pay your employees, labor, by labor, um, and 
to also pay off credit cards. Which type of credit cards do you want? You want to two credit cards. Remember, this is almost like a chessboard. This is your backup, and you have your 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 next barrier of protection is going to be your American Express Charge Card, which allows you to buy energy and chattel. What is chattel? Google it. Uh, and then you have your APR credit card to cover your utilities, your phone, internet, subscriptions, and fees, insurance. And this is your 30-day buffer because most businesses, none of the businesses, you get a 30-day net credit line. Um, so if you buy something from a, as a business, you buy something from a supplier, you have 30 days to pay. That's a, that's a line of credit. If you're able to do that and then put it on a credit card, boom, now you have 60 days to pay. Even if you're getting better terms. And all of that time, you're collecting the interest. So right now what you're doing is you're just collecting interest and pouring that interest into your card. And just loading up on interest. Now, we talked about chattel. What's the chattel you're gonna buy? Great idea, question. You're gonna buy your laptops, cameras, books, equipment, cell phones, and everything for your mobile office. Because right now, you're a tiny little insect in a really big jungle. You're gonna be living lean. Um, I call it van life. And you, but one thing you wanna make sure you're doing is you're monitoring your burn rate. Basically, how much money are you expending personally and in your business over time plus any financing fees over over every month. That's why I said there's an APR credit, credit cards, because if you have additional financing fees, that increases your overall monthly overhead. So when I was doing this, um, I was looking at my finances and my monthly finance fee in terms of the interest I was paying was like $200 a month. I'm at a point I made in this video was going to go down to zero. Well, it's actually, it's gone down to zero. Uh, so my monthly overhead is $1,500. I know, I live in California. Now, um, so you have your buffer and then uh, next thing you want to do is you want to start raising your, your you want to have some type of liquidity. Lines of credit are great because theoretically someone could open a line of credit for you for this much money, theoretically. Um, but you're probably not. Your goal is to get at least $100,000 minimum on your charge card and the same thing on your APR credit cards. You can have multiple credit cards here. The more, the better because these are, these are they're almost like, like fishing rods. You want to have as many fishing rods. You think of yourself as like Dr. Octopus, where you just have a lot of different arms that can grab things. And you have to think about it in terms of like a glove, where this is the corporate veil, where you're here as a person and you're going to be stretching your hand from yourself through your business credit, your personal account, into your business account that you're putting money into in order to acquire a Chase credit card in order to get 0% credit, credit or whatever to get whatever you need. And you need a laptop, you need equipment, you need to rent something, you need to get higher employees, you need to get some consulting, you need to design, you need to market. That's all you're gonna do. And then when you're done, you're gonna pull your hand out. That's kind of it. I feel like I was just putting my hand up a cow. Okay, anyway. So that's that. Now, once you get your equipment, and you're structured, you're set up, you're investing, you're working, you're slaving away. You have you have a couple different options here. If you want to do like trades and your investment hedging or whatever, you can take money from business. And I haven't done this, but you know, buying dips and doing those types of investments, or do your crypto. Or I would I would definitely do stuff like this, investing under your business versus under your personal. Because any losses, you can deduct them. Um, it's a lot more manageable from, I think, from a business standpoint. Talk to your CPA, uh, your accountant, for more and better information on that. But after you get all this set up, you got a place to live, you're working, money's coming in, you have your money system flows all operational, you're protecting your credit, you have your accounts open. Um, Ally Capital One, Marcus Golden, Amex, and that's a personal savings account. Uh, you then want to start developing your idea. What is your main idea? What is the what idea you're going to looking for, Henny? You're looking for an idea that's going to change the world. Peter Thiel's book Zero to One talks about how every business and all the real businesses are basically monopolies. Like, if you want to look something up, you look at Google. There's always Ask Jeeves, there's Yahoo, but who who honestly goes to Yahoo.com to look anything up? I mean, maybe my uncle still does or your your grandma, but everyone uses Google. Everyone, people think about electric cars, they think Tesla. People think about retail, they think Walmart. Like there is, people think about electrics, electronics, generally speaking, you go to GE, General Electronics. These companies, these really, really big companies 
basically have an essentially monopoly, but it doesn't look like a monopoly. They pretend like they're a monopoly. They pretend like they have competition, but they don't really have competition because they're killing the competition. So you want to think of an idea like that. Once you want to develop that idea, you want then want to grow that idea five logs. So this is this actually was actually a pretty big big breakthrough. Um, I can't remember um, his name. Uh, something H Hawowski talked about how there were different levels to wealth and capital just creation. There was some things that required permission and some that don't require permission. He was talking about how coding and content creation doesn't require permission. I can sit here and ramble and talk and no one's gonna, I don't need anyone's permission to record this video and post it online. If I wanna write a book, I can sit down and write a book, I can write a manuscript, I can write code, I can write a program, I can build Facebook, I can do all these things and I don't need any permission. And they can be revolutionary because they can go, this is just information I can code, and upload to the internet and get access to all these people markets and by solving their problem, by reducing their suffering and making a bunch of, bunch, bunch of money. Okay. From there, uh, you want to develop that idea and go multiple multiple logarithms. Basically, uh, I, I designed it like this in terms of, because it's a very ah, spider, ah, go away. Anyway, uh, well, you have multiple levels that you can go into. So, you want if you want to have a billion dollar exit, you have to think about well, what what's the starting frame? We think of where the way a logarithms work. You have your log of base 10. So if you wrote log base 10 um, of 1,000, it would be 3. Because log 10 to, 10 to the 3 is, is 100. Is it 1,000 or 100? 10 to the 3. There are levels because you're multiplying yourself. And you're basically adding different dimensions. Okay, we're back. We had some technical difficulties with the camera. It fell. Yeah, so we're talking about logarithms. And so you have log 10, log base 10 of, of 100 is 10 to the 2, because 10 times 10 is 100. So if you say you want to grow something, let's say you have 10 apples, you want to have 1,000 apples, you have to figure out, okay, it would be log base 10 of a that log base 10 to a thousand, it'd be three, 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 three dimensions, three generations of growth. And so what you want to do is you want to figure out your idea is that your idea as it sits in your head that's with zero execution is X to the zero of one, because all you have is that one idea, but you want to grow it. So 10 to the two, so you have to figure out a way to add a different dimension to it multiple times. And from there, you're basically you're developing your idea and adding complexity to it. It's no different than like when you're having a child, you have a sperm and an egg that come together, it's one, but then they divide um, exponentially. So two to the four, to the, to the eight, to the 16, to the 64, to the, was it 267? I don't know, I, it, it gets bigger very quickly. Um, and that's the type of growth that you want with your idea. Uh, people always talk about, you know, uh, the, when you're posting videos online, people just always look at the growth because growth in stocks market, you know, on the internet, on videos, on websites, it's how fast are you growing and how fast can, is that growth happening in terms of how quickly in time increments are you going to be able to hit this. In terms of new business ventures that actually go public, the average time to go from zero to a, 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 you know, a multi-million dollar exit is usually between nine to eight, eight to nine years. Um, if you're in for situations like examples like LinkedIn or something like that, where they have their exit nine years later um, when when they IPO, uh, but other times you have much faster opportunities with the internet and videography and with YouTube, where you can grow an audience within six months to a year, and just by one viral video, you can have you can have you have two methodologies. You can have to do a viral video and then keep doing viral videos and just get very proficient at it. And just keep growing your, your audience and the, the reason people are coming to you or you can have a product or service that just continues attracting more people because it keeps compounding every time you put out a new video it, it over time it grows so like for here and so you have you have one video you post you have one idea you make one video and it's great and you get you go from having 10 an audience of 10 people to an audience of 
uh, a thousand. Let's just go. You say ten people. There's your family, your uncle, your sister, your brother that's watching you. And then you post an amazing video, and there's a thousand people watching you. Awesome. Now you want to do that multiple times. You want to, you want to let's 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 do ten times. So then you do ten viral videos in a row. Bat, 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 bat. Right now you have now you have a, a solid chunk of block, but it's still very flat because all you're doing here is unidimensional. You've only been creating videos. So how do you how do you add? You need to add another dimension of it where maybe you you do ten more videos. Those ten other videos are in collaboration with ten other businesses or ten other uh, video uh, ten other YouTubers or with another ten other somethings. So you you're, you're you're increasing your dimensions of the, the places. So let's say you were doing those ten videos at home, but now you're doing ten videos those videos and you're doing those videos in ten other cities, and now you're getting more exposure because you're adding more dimensions to the body of work, but it's still one solid body of work. And finally, at some point, you're gonna blow up. This is when you go viral. Being viral is this idea where people think if you're blowing up, but what you're really doing is you're actually digging down. You, you dig down so deep into the zeitgeist and the, in, in the minds of the people, of the 7.6 billion people on earth, that they have this serious emotional connection where they just need to watch you, they just need to talk to you, they just need to get to you because you got the juice. Uh, and then from there, you become, you become mainstream. You become, you become apple pie. Your goal in this situation then is to make your idea become as ubiquitous as apple pie. Everyone's driving your electric cars. Everybody orders off your website. Everybody uses your smartphones. Everybody uses your apps because your apps are just that good. For one, you're good. And you solve the emotional problem within Maslow's hierarchy of needs of you wanting to connect, feel safe, happy, scared, and excited, and sexy, and amazing, um, and you're the go-to, because you're the go. Uh, you got, and then that's when you, you really get big. You're all the multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar. You're talking about Saudi Arabia oil company. You're talking Amazon, you're talking Apple, you're talking Microsoft, you're talking Mr. Beast, you're talking Tesla, you're talking Walmart, Amazon, Chevron, CVS, Toyota. We're talking really, really big. We're talking Lakers, we're talking Knicks, we're talking Bulls. Because you're creating so much value, so much emotional impact on people within within the waters, where you're just every time you upload, you're just you're just like in the ocean, dropping a nuke. You're just upload, upload, upload. You launch a new product. You're just doing something, just putting it out there, and people are just like, "Oh my God, I need you. Please take my money because oh my God, I can't have it. Please can't have it. Can I have it? Oh my God, please, I need it." So all of that. Eventually, you're going to have this huge thing that's going to be very valuable. And as you've all probably known, this past week, Mr. Beast got turned down a billion dollar offering. Doing this. <laughs> that's all he did. He was making videos with his friends, started making more videos online, started doing some crazy, consistently posting some crazy shit of him and his friends doing human monopoly and real squid games and grew a huge following. He opened up new product lines. He went into, you started doing apps and collaborations with other industries. And then he got offered a billion dollars for all the value of everything that he did in terms of, he went five logs. Is that one, is that four logs? It's usually four, this is up to four logs of growth. Now, theoretically, so, so here's what I predict. What I predict is that Mr. Beast is, has done this, but he also has a group of people around him, those friends. I would say, theoretically, one of his friends could, could go off and replicate this, taking that small chunk and going off to do their own thing. Not using Mr. Beast's name or anything like that, just taking a small piece of it and doing the same thing for them and then doing an exit. Because this is literally how everything works. Because once you get to this level, what you could do, you gotta do, you, you, you exit. You gotta sell the whole thing because you grew the pie, you added so many dimensions to it, like even does these lines, like this is it, like you were, this is one, two dimensionals, like this is three dimensions, this is when you grow into four dimensions. So you went from this and you, and now you can segment it and break it down. You can sell off a slice, you can, you can, you can cop, sell, sell the copyright, you can do a theme park, you can do burgers, you can do publishing. You can have your own publishing company. Hell, you can you can buy an island and start your own country, or go colonize Jupiter because Elon Musk took Mars. 
uh, and then you can just segment it out and just build it out. And the great thing about this is that this is not just a business thing. This is how nature works. Nature propagates in this same manner and fashion. So it's, it's, it's a very deep fundamental mechanism of how society and the world works. And it's along the, these lines. And what doesn't work fails. It doesn't, it doesn't grow. But if it does work, it works. And it works amazingly. Um, and then it goes back into this. So you take these pieces, you, like I said, you, were, you can sell a piece of it for multi-million dollar exit or keep a portion of it. So you're managing control because you're, you're, you're founding owner. Um, and, but then this, what I didn't draw is it goes back to the internet because when you're selling a piece of it, where are you going to be selling it? Robinhood, Webull, Open Seas, somewhere on the internet, somewhere stock exchange, the NASDAQ, the Nikkei, the, the NYC, all these other little exchanges. And that's kind of it. Uh, that means the last summary I'll say is this. Um, there's, there's a serious difference between being rich and being wealthy. Um, being rich means you have money and basically you have more debt than credit. Sorry, you have more credit than debt. Basically, people owe you, well, yeah, you have more debt than credit. Basically, I own, you own the debt. It means people owe you more than you owe people. That means you're rich. But wealthy means you have great health over time. Because one thing that you have to realize is that this whole entire board from the left to the right is time. And ultimately, your time is going to be over. I think I'm going to be able to live to 95. My grandpa did it. Um, but over this time, you should be healthy. You should be with your friends, family, people you love along this journey. Um, and maintain your health. I mean, keeping your, your healthy mind, sound mind, keeping vitamins. Um, I already had another blog post about that. I'll put a link in the description below. And keeping track of your care for your body, your soul, uh, your your business, your, your love life, your family, and make, keeping that as healthy as possible. Over that, over time, you can continue building down into the 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 the, um, the pyramid because you started with the coding through the content. Now you have the capital, and we have the capital. You can actually buy the labor, and with the labor, you can buy real estate and reinvest and and sell slices of time. That's another thing about this. Um, you may you don't may not also just have to sell product or services. Or do videos you can also sell time slices so let's say this was let's say this thing you grew was a giant portfolio of, of real estate well now you're gonna be selling slices of it like slices of bread to the market and it was gonna be a day you're, you sell it because you can again another thing with logarithms you can they're multiple multi-dimensional you could you could take a piece of property or an idea and and dip, there's there's so many dimensions to a thing that you could sell it like most people like we live in a three-dimensional world, we travel through fourth dimensional time space. Well, that's another dimension that you could sell a slice of. So you have a, a billion dollar portfolio of of, of, uh, of real estate, commercial and residential. You take a time slice and say you're selling you're selling access to it almost like a timeshare or something like that, or a hotel where you're selling a, uh, a day for a thousand dollars, two hundred dollars, but you're or you're selling it, you're you're renting out, you're selling it, access to it for a day for two hundred dollars. But you have two thousand units. You see what I'm saying? You're able, but you're you don't need to be in all two thousand units because you're you're one person. You're, you're not in your car. But you're in your business. You're in Tahiti or Cabo or whatever. Um, because you're able to get your real estate, and then there some some of the places go a little higher, like nation states. I'm not going to get to Putin or the stuff that he's doing, but yeah, that basically goes up up there. Um, so right at this point, we're kind of with superlatives. Um, so just some examples like this. Um, we had coding. Um, we talked about people like Facebook. Um, but also coding could also be anything written, like, like Lord of the Rings. Um, it could also be a formula, like if someone had the, uh, the formula for an amazing cancer drug. Um, Uber is based off of coding, because all they did was, was write the code for the app and talk and negotiate right down the contracts. Um, capital, hedge funds, Citigroup, um, labor, uh, and collaboration. It's almost like GE or Toyota, where you have labor and people in a factory doing these things. Real estate, you can talk about a Saudi oil company where their wealth is based off the the the, the value of that's what's in the land, which is the oil, or Berkshire Hathaway, where they're working in real estate and the value that they're access to is the fact that they're able to live, they have access to all these specialty markets and products throughout the world. 
they're able to connect people accordingly. And then when we level up, nation states, talk about the USA, Russia, um, basically whole governments were able to literally print their own money and keep raising their national debt. Uh, and so, yeah, and then you get these pieces and you sell it back into it, into, back into, uh, in, through the internet, you sell it back and advertise. It used to be historically, it was through radio, then it was through television. Now it's through the internet because the internet is now the channel, the primary method to accessing things. Because before it used to be TV, it was almost like a one-way street. They would broadcast and hopefully they would they'd pump something out and hopefully it would interact with somebody and that person would come back and buy. Now it's a two-way street where the internet and you, it's almost like a brachistochrome because you're able to cut through so quickly and enter another version of your reality. Um, and it's infinite because you have 7.6 billion people with infinite desires and you have infinite desires. And these people are, let's say everyone lives 60 years and you're selling time slices with 60 years times 7.6 billion. That's a lot of time. Now, if you think about 7.6 billion people, each living 24 hours of time in a day, how many, how many, how many, how many lifetimes, how many total human lifetimes occur in a day? If there's 7.6 billion people living a day in a day, that's a lot of years. That's this amount of years that happen every day. And these people are all working, grinding. And that's why I want people to talk about the world economy crashing. I, I don't, this will never crash. As long as people suffer and someone's willing to work and somebody wants something, there's always going to be a market because the market is the people and the people are on the internet. I'm done.